and welcome to the SBP Podcast, Mobile Filmmaking. I am your host, as always, Susie Botello, and I welcome you to a very special, very fun, entertaining, and again, special episode 200. I have invited two very special people. Everybody's special, quite honestly, but I thought in the light of recent events that I have participated in and that you have probably participated in, I thought I would invite filmmaker, first prize, best short film winner of 2024 at the International Mobile Film Festival in San Diego, Duani Shaw as one of our special guests, and our very own International Mobile Film Festival brand ambassador and podcast inspirer, (laughs) Aaron Naboos. So I thought I'd share a little bit of an introduction to the podcast. It was around 2007 when I first discovered what a podcast was. And you're not going to believe how I discovered this. <laughs> I discovered it because I was using GarageBand. I went to GarageBand to play with it, makes a, make a little tune or something like that. And I found that there was a, a feature called podcasting. And I thought, well, wait a minute, what is this? And so I looked into it and I thought, this is the closest thing to having my own radio show that I could have. And so I thought, oh, I want to do this. I want to start a podcast. Basically, I was thinking about a little radio show where I could have, you know, play music. And then I found out, uh uh-oh, this was this was after Napster got sued and all this stuff happened. And I realized well, I'm not going to get permission from big bands or anything like that. I don't want to mess with that. So I kind of put the whole podcasting thing away. I didn't really have any other motive other than that. So, you know, later on, the film festival came along and all of that. And uh, our one of our guests, Aaron Naboos, which is why I call him the Inspirer, he had his own podcast show. And so now that's a pretty fair enough introduction into how, at least how I started getting the idea of even knowing what a podcast was. I also was a listener like you. (laughs) I listened to podcasts, but I never really thought before being on Aaron's podcast that I would have my own voice recorded willingly um, and put out there for you to listen to. And, um, of course, it was also you who inspired me. Mobile filmmakers, people making movies with their phones. Some of you have been to our film festival in San Diego. Some of you participated in it, even if you couldn't come to San Diego. And some of you had nothing to do with the film festival, but you found me somehow out there in the universe of podcasts. And I'm glad you did. And I know that some of you have shared stories with me that you've been inspired by this podcast and the guests that I've had on this show to make your own either feature or short film using your smartphone camera. Now, I want to have, I, I want to say something. This is really important to me. You all know that all of us together are a community. And I see you right now as I am behind this microphone in my dark room at home, I see you. And you're always at the top of my mind. I don't just see one of you. I see many of you because I've met many of you. But you know, this is kind of a one on one with each and every one of you. And so I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for listening to the show. 
And if you've been a guest on the show, thank you for coming on and being a guest on the show. I mean that because you have made it possible to inspire people to realize their dream of making movies on the phone. And we've done that together. So before I get a little too mushy, let's go and let's talk to Aaron Naboos and Dwani Shaw. They're just sort of standing by. Ready, guys? Let's start the show. Duwani Shah and Aaron Naboos, welcome to our very special 200th episode. Woohoo! Yes. Yes. I am so. That's fantastic. Yes. I'm... Congratulations, Susie, for making it this far. Oh. And may you have 200 more. Two... Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did, 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 a, little, a little tidbit. Did you know that Apple only, only allows 300 episodes at a time? Oh, so what? you have to like rebrand your podcast. No, not that. really. <laughs> what happens is like when I when you reach 300, the first 100 sort of starts to go away. Kind of like backups, right? What? Yeah. That makes no sense. Now, it will still be on our website, by the way, sbppodcast.studio, guys. Um, and it'll always be there, but it won't be on... Apple Podcasts because they limited for some that reason. That's so strange. I know. Who would have thought? Did you know that, Aaron? I had no clue. Let's introduce. That's kind of like a, adding like the seasonality to it. Yeah, it's weird. It's, you know, it's probably has something to do with, you know, just them liking to set rules to throw us all off and keep us attuned. <laughs> keep you relevant. Yes, yeah, something. Mm. Keep themselves relevant. Um, Aaron has a podcast show, the Hall H Show podcast, and Aaron, I did a little introduction and shared with everybody how I came about, uh, to find out what a podcast was, and that was through GarageBand around 2007, um, but there was another thing that you and I discussed and that was the other day we were looking back at the first time I recorded a podcast with anyone that was you Aaron <laughs> yeah and actually it was in 2016 on November 10th so we had the elections on November 8th <laughs> November 9th, everybody was in shock. And then the following evening at 7 p.m. <laughs> and we were at actually, I looked at my calendar and it was still there, the notes of that. Um, and we were at Lestat's coffee shop here in Hillcrest in San Diego. Do you remember that, Erin? Yes, that was all the way in episode four. I believe we kind of put a subtitle on that podcast called uh, the magic of mobile films. So wow, yeah, the magic of mobile films. I like that. The magic of the two hundredth episode, right here, right now. Um, there you go. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to talk, um, you know, share with you guys that Duani was in a previous episode, just a few episodes ago. Uh, she is a filmmaker. Uh, she's, she's a, I call her in a way, a filmmaking guru, uh, oh. because you know, just about everything there is to know about filmmaking. And I've mentioned you a few times in other podcasts, Duani, because that conversation that we had together, and I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes. It was really just awesome. And you just. Fed, likewise. You fed the show. Ditto and likewise. So much. It was just so much. I had a great time and my mom enjoyed it more than anybody else I know. <laughs> so thank you for that. 
<laughs> that's a, that's incredible. Give your mom a big hug from me. Um, <laughs> we'll do. Um, so I thought we'd do something a little special here. First of all, I kind of want to get to some new a news item. I don't know if you've heard about this because I know you're really busy. A, a little news item that kind of popped up on September 19th. Do you know what I'm going to be referring to? Do you even have a hint, Dwani? September 19th? Are you... I'm referring to Are some, we talking about the new iPhone? Well, um, I am talking about huge news for the filmmaking, mobile filmmaking, and indie filmmaking industry. Mm-hmm. It has to do with zombies... Yeah. Okay. Wow. You're really, this is, yeah. I don't think I have a, I don't think I have oh, a clue. So it's, a, it's a feature film that was made on a, on a phone, right? Yep. $75 oh. million dollar movie. Wow. Shot with an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Guys, pat yourself in the back if you've only spent $5 on your short film. Uh, <laughs> but $75 million dollars it's what did they spend that money on well it's pay to play right i mean they've got big name actors cillian murphy is is coming back it's really 28 years later remember 28 days later i mean i love that film i don't know about you yeah yeah those are good yeah well mm-hmm. i love that film and um it, it was actually the first time i saw cillian murphy in that and you know, like he won an Oscar, right, for uh, for his last film. So mm-hmm. I'm sure he charges a little more now than he did back in what was it, 2002 or something like that. Mm-hmm. But this film was shot by uh, so the two people that that made 28 Days Letter, not Letter, sorry guys. My tea. I'm drinking tea. (laughs) Um, Alex Garland wrote it, and Danny Boyle uh, is the the producer, the cinematographer, the director, probably the cinematographer. I'm I'm not sure. I don't have that many details in front of me right now. But the thing that I know is that both of them teamed up together to make this one again, and and there's actually going to be another another one after that. I do have that title. Oh, wow. So this one is going to be, it's going to come out in the summer of 2025. It's called 20, 28 Years Later. And then uh, the other one, it's a sequel to it. It's called. Oh, can I guess? The, the title? Can I guess? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Is it fi- is it 56 years later? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, you're too funny. Like, actually, it's, you know, that should have been the name, right? That would have been it awesome. It makes sense to me. Right? I would have bought it. Yeah. Right? But then we would have had to wait forever. Like, we, I Facts. would have been a zombie by then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's called 28 Years Later Part 2, The Bone Temple. So, uh, and is that also iPhone? It, I don't know. But see, the first one was shot with a prosumer camera. It was a Canon XL1. It was a mini DV. Remember mini DV tapes? Yeah. Actually, I mean, I've read about them, but I've never personally used one because it was before my time, like as a filmmaker. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's how so when I've, I started out, it was mini DV tapes. Yeah, it was before my time, yeah. too. Yeah, shush. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, mini DV tapes, and and it wasn't like a professional thirty five millimeter or anything like that. This is way back in two thousand two, and so now he's decided to use the iPhone fifteen Pro Max. But see, the thing is that they've attached. I think I'm if I'm remembering it right, they had they used more than one, a, a big number of them. And they also use a lens, um, you know, like a Panavision lens attached to it. There's a Panavision lens for the iPhone. That is why. Yeah, well, there's adapters, you know. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's still like a really massive win for a smartphone for like a full-fledged yeah. Hollywood movie to be filmed solely on it is like... 
unprecedented. So I'm kind of, uh, is that a trailer out for this? No, they're not. It's, so they just finished principal production, principal filming mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, the, the main stuff. So unless they have more to film, they should be editing a trailer very soon. But the thing about the 15 Pro and the Pro Max, at least the Pro Max mm-hmm. that I remember was the Aces support. So for you can, so you can film in log capture. Remember, and uh, Aces is the Academy Color Encoding System. Mm-hmm. And yes, I had to make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the it's it's an encoding system, you know. So by doing that, it means that pretty much anybody can make a feature film and and it will qualify for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. So I don't know. It's kind of cool. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. Maybe, you know, because when you sort of Google the list of Netflix approved cameras, that's you one. still don't have like it's I, I, I'll have to look it up now if like an iPhone is acceptable, because up until a few years ago, I remember they weren't even like accepting Sony full frame cameras, you know, the right. mirrorless ones. So the fact that, I mean, the iPhone 16 Pro, I'm yet to get my hands on it to just test it out. But that has like video performance that is unmatched, like the best so far. And what is more exciting is the um, audio that they have in that, the audio filters yes. and stuff. So you can film someone, like let's say you're filming a scene, someone talking on a street you can in the native camera app go to audio settings after filming it Mm -hmm. and choose what you want the person's audio to sound like so you can completely isolate it so it sounds like whoever's talking into the camera sounds like it's treated in a studio or you can have a cinematic feel where like they're more frontal and the surrounding sounds are you know the back the ambience is in the surrounding right or you can have like a naturalistic and I, i just mean like these abilities to do this is just insane. It's like, unprecedented. You, for, for someone to execute something like that, you'd have to go out with like, oh, you know, like a lav mic and a zoom and a right. recorder and whatnot. And I don't know if it still holds a candle to actual professional sound recording. But if you're an influencer or a content creator, this is a game changer. Like, why would you ever buy another, like a DJI mic? Right. right. I can see if that if you have this phone. Yeah, I can see that for myself because I do a lot of interviews at, at conventions where it's really noisy. So uh-huh. uh, this, I mean, that feature would come in handy for for what I need. Well, yeah, I was as long as I was just telling Aaron the about the thirty two bit float, you know, which is on GarageBand, and a lot of people don't know that, you know, but that's mm-hmm. also changing a lot of things for sound capturing for videos and films and things like that as well. That's also a game changer, you know, because that, yeah, you know, but I still myself, I would still use um, a sound mixer, you know, a professional if I had that choice. But if you don't. Absolutely. And I, I don't think, like I said, I made that one short on the iPhone and it's doing so well. It like I would have just screened at another festival. But to do that requires a special set of just knowledge and research it's not like filming on the phone means going in blind and it's easier it just means that you just have to adapt to like newer rules and sure it gives you the flexibility to be more portable and mobile and quicker but that's what i love about fact it that, that sort of technology is being democratized on such a big level yep. that's that is the thing that's wild to me i'm not worried about like everybody making films because you know suddenly they all have the capability i don't i don't think that having the capability directly translates into people actually doing it and then there's me on the Um, other side standing right next to you duani and saying (laughs) everybody go do that everybody go do that right now go make your movie start right now i was i was actually having a conversation with a friend about this you know we were talking about the new iphone that's coming out and the fact that the camera is so good that content creation has really and i'm talking about content creation not filmmaking right but content it has you know we used to call it video production like, right boom yeah 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 the names kind of evolved you know yeah. over time 
um now it's called reels and tiktoks and you know people don't even <laughs> call it content anymore it's like oh True. did you see that reel and did you see that story um but anyway so it was just i think uh he was just expressing this sense of you know fear of like oh my god everybody's going to start doing it it is already a very saturated market how would you ever get noticed and i was like but you know just look at the flip side if everybody starts doing it that means that there's going to be a broader wider bigger sea of content for you to shine through from and it's all the more reason to really grind and focus on the quality of everything that's involved in a good story exactly. as a film there you go yeah because more doesn't mean better exactly more just means crowded and satiated and a lot of people because of how easily accessible these great visuals are now will just shoot whatever like my only problem with better cameras on phones is that now it's so simple for a senseless moment to be captured for eternity oh, like people don't it. think twice before just like click click this that snapchat and i'm just like gosh I used to enjoy taking photographs so much on vacations and now it's like if if there's no pics it didn't happen you know it's like social media or it didn't happen it takes away the joy it makes me want to like you know like drop everything and go buy another like small you know digital camera again just so I can have <laughs> like just so I can have that one it's device different. that is de- dedicated entirely to just taking photographs I don't want to take photographs on the Insta app and then add a filter and then add a song and add a, <laughs> you, you know, go, you can go, re- you can go retro and get like a, a like th- those Polaroid cameras, you know? <laughs> can I tell I you something? Just, so I have an SLR that weighs a ton, kind of. It's uh, it's a Pentax and it has a big lens on it and all that stuff. And if I go out to, to take photos of that, it's, there's a specific intention w- that I'm going to do that mm-hmm. with. And then I get a little shy when I'm out, right? Taking photos with mm-hmm. that because everybody's going to look at me like, oh, a photographer. <laughs> and as opposed to just using my phone, like I'm trying to make a big show of myself. It's so, it's such a weird vibe between those I mean, two. I think just being an artist comes with a sense of certain abandon. Hmm. I don't I don't think I don't think you can care about the optics of it too much because you're right. I think the word you used intention yes is is pretty much what I was trying to say. Like I like the fact that we used to have as much as I love modern technology and the freedom that it has given me. It's really like added, you know, wind beneath my wings and all of that. But I really like the fact that I used to have a phone that was a phone. I had a camera that I used to take photos. I had an iPod that I used to listen to music. And the consolidation of it all has just led to doom scrolling, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're up at 3 a.m. Sc- scrolling on your phone and eventually like Googling how to get better sleep at night or why do I have dark circles, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, or how the heck do I find that one photo? You know, because I have like, I don't know, I think I have like 29,000 photos in my, but mind you that most of them, thank God, there's that folder, screen selfies and screen captures. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would just take forever. Uh, Double circles around our eyes. So, so anyways, that's the, uh, that's the news of the day. Um, And I just had to bring that up because. I don't know, $75 million is the most anyone has ever spent on a film. I've actually, about $12,000 is the most that I've heard someone spend on a feature film shot with a phone. I I know there, there are people who have probably spent more and probably more um, professionals that have spent more than that. But $75 million, my God. You know, that's... Yeah, that's... I mean, that's more than the average feature film itself. Yes, so and I, I, I believe Sony... Really expensive rigs and whatnot. Yeah, I believe Sony is behind it, behind this film. Mm. So, you know, 
I mean, Fun. it's not. I mean, this this is. I mean, the only difference between this film and another film, right? I mean, these are established uh, filmmakers here, um, with you know Hollywood actors and and all of that. But if we're talking about seventy five million dollars. I mean, it's basically the only difference is that it was shot with the phone, you know. And when I say a phone, I know it, it's more than one, but still, it's a phone. And so it's, a phone. it's, a, it's still a phone. Um, hopefully, they. do you think they remembered? I just want to ask them, did you remember to put it on airplane mode? Because, you know, <laughs> you get a lot of calls. <laughs> <laughs> May not have even had a SIM card in them, you know, who knows? Um, I bet they had all sorts of extra backup phones lying around. Right. Which one for take three? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. I bet they had like phones dedicated as yeah. like, you know, how and sometimes you use cam A, cam B. Yes. Um, no, but more than that, I feel like that 75 million. I want to see what sort of locations and stages they had, you know? Yeah. I feel like that's, I, that's where the money has to have gone. I, right? I think it like has to do with dressing up the shot. Paying the actors, you know, running it like a traditional film, right? Hollywood style film, right? Because. Yeah, but it's still a film that's like over 50 million. Yeah. That's. That's a that's lot. Still, that's wild. I, you know? you know, I don't know. Oppenheimer was a big film and, you know, Cillian Murphy you know, picked up a big award. He's like, now? give it to me. Give me all of it. <laughs> uh, Let's see how far this goes. Yeah. So anyway, that's, um, that's cool. I, I don't know that I would want to make a $75 million film. I think I would be paranoid all, all day on set, Wani. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> I'm going to be killed <laughs> if I ruin <laughs> this scene. Oh, that's a little pressure. So, um, so, so, Lonnie, I want to take, I, I want to give actually uh, Aaron a chance here <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, to talk a little bit about, you know, the podcasting thing. If you remember this, uh, Aaron, and then how you came to get into as a brand ambassador for the International Mobile Film Festival. I mean, we met without making this seriously long, right? But we met because I was doing a panel on mobile filmmaking and representing the film festival, right, at yep. Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. And, but we didn't really actually meet there. You just you were attending that and you walked away. And No, like no, actually, I, I, I did introduce myself. Really? I and did. I, just, I barely even remember this. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so right afterwards, you, you know, now I'm remembering, were you with Alex? I was with Alex. I remember you now. Oh my god! <laughs> um, yeah. So so basically, this was what uh, Comic Con two thousand sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. And um, I had, uh, I, I you know during the course of, of Comic Con, I sort of plan out my interviews, and I usually do maybe four or five interviews at Comic Con. Um, but uh, I do want to, you know, take the opportunity to be a fan as well. And I had bookmarked your panel as a. Uh, a panel of interest that I, I wanted to check out because wow, uh, smartphone filmmaking. I mean, that was, that was a pretty cool concept. I mean, I think we had talked about it before on another podcast. Maybe it was the podcast we did together in 2016, but you know, I was a big fan of the, the, um, the TV show house. And I know that they filmed it on the, um, on, on a, on a DSLR. So, um, the next evolution of course was, you know, smartphones, Right. Um, that quality. So I kind of thought, oh, this would be a good panel to attend. And um, I'm glad I did because, you know, I felt your passion at that panel and um, you gave some good information and the audience was really captivated. And so I I knew I wanted to get you on the podcast as soon as possible after I went to your panel. And then after that, I know it's called X now, but it was Twitter where you tagged me a few times and then and then you messaged me about going on to your the hall h show did Mm -hmm. you already start the hall h show podcast while you were at comic-con or were you just thinking about it because that was in july Mm, yeah we had um i think our first episode we recorded was probably late 
2015 or early 2016. So um, we had already started, but um, I was already starting to make contacts and inviting people to be on the podcast, uh, you know, during all, yeah. during most of 2016. So I was on Aaron's podcast, Duani, and he recorded mm-hmm. me. This was the very first time. I was so nervous about it. I had no idea what to expect. I was I was expecting something like, you know, like, what is that PBS, uh, you know, um, what is that? The, the interviews that they do? Mm-hmm. Um, I forgot what that's called now. <laughs> well, there's a bunch of shows that they have. Well, but yeah, but what do they call their their regular ones? They have a certain feel, you know, like it's like a formal interview, mm-hmm, all yeah. of that. And ours and was like <laughs> I was like the evening news. Yeah, ours was totally like totally unscripted almost and like totally off yeah, the cuff. Yeah, he was asking me stuff like what's your favorite flavor type thing, you know. It was crazy mm-hmm. and 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 that thing went on for like two and a half hours, three hours. It three was hours. like yeah. <laughs> And <laughs> Those... and I expected okay, so Duane, you've interviewed people, right? Before. Mm-hmm. And for video, mm-hmm. we cut out stuff. We edit that stuff. Right? Yeah. So he didn't cut anything out. <laughs> I think that's amazing, honestly. Oh. I've been watching some podcasts oh. and I really like it when they retain those pauses and the mistakes and the fumbling and the arriving to a point because I feel like that's just so real and so natural. And I think audiences out there are kind of done with like prim and proper content. I think people just want to just want to like, you know, kick back and have something that sounds and feels a lot more real. Well, it definitely... And so I like it when people leave in the pauses. Yeah. Well, it's not It's not just that. I mean, it's still, you're telling... It's a little complicated with podcasting, though, because it is a conversation, and sometimes it can get a little boring for people because one thing leads to another and things like that. And there's also... Yeah, I guess that's true. But also podcasts yeah. are like, I feel like the podcast audience is already different from like the video oh, content audience in the sense that they don't need to be as, for the lack of a better word, titillated, you know, that they don't, they, they don't really need the constant like deliver entertainment to me in the first 15 seconds. Oh, yeah. Or I'm skipping this thing. Like a radio, have, like a radio yeah. station. Yeah, definitely yeah, so not they that. They do have like patience to like, you know, yep. they know what they're signing up for. Yep. And um, yeah, I think at the end of the day, you know, there's like I, like I said, there's just already so much content out there that's made to like cater to people that this is that one space and like, you know, Susie, with like your podcast, you get to like really have your voice and perspective. And I like the fact that it's a niche audience, you know, yeah. I like that you're not trying to like cater to everyone. You know that it's for a specific group of people. And as long as they enjoy it, it's, it just feels so much more communal. Yeah, it's definitely and community based. And that's that's a thing that I wanted, you know, to share, too. Now, now with Aaron when he gave me that opportunity, right, Aaron, you opened up my mind because, you know, back in 2007, I was thinking about, oh, I'm going to create like a podcast. And I was thinking like a radio show with music and then Napster, you know, and all that stuff. I started thinking, oh, God, I can't just do that. I'll get sued. That's going to be difficult. (laughs) So I put that on my back burner like, yeah, dream on, Susie. But then the community started building around the film festival and Aaron was you know after this this first it was the fourth episode right you said yes. Aaron uh-huh. it was the fourth so, one so after that um as in in 2017 literally the following year um I think it was a, around January or something like that that I was already talking to somebody about uh, doing a streaming thing for the for the filmmakers and he was using his own servers and stuff like that and and then I went in March we had that other recording that we did Aaron where mm-hmm. it was gonna give a shout out to Tracy hot nerd girl met her there and uh, she was going to bring the Star Wars steampunk universe our first, a cosplay red carpet show yep. the festival and Anthony Dela Cruz 
was also there. And he's an actor and a filmmaker. And this was his second year participating in the film festival as a filmmaker. And and your co-host, Alex Benedicto, was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was and, a pretty that was a, that was really cool opportunity because you know, during the course of like me covering all these pop culture events, you get to meet all sorts of people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had met Tracy at um, at uh, these meetups for content creators. So when nice. you were when you had asked me, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have like you know cosplayers bring the uh, the uh, the filmmakers down the red carpet? I mean, I, I knew right away that you know uh, uh, Tracy and, and the steampunk universe people would be an awesome the choice to uh to do that so i'm glad yeah. that she was able to to make that happen oh yeah and that they kept doing it and they're you know um yeah so we did that and also we recorded at a different list stats that <laughs> right. was the one at adams <laughs> avenue in normal yep. heights mm-hmm. um so i remember standing in the doorway of that cafe after everybody had left and i i was so inspired by that experience you know, after having recorded that other one before that and everything and feeling like, OK, I can I can I can get used to being behind a microphone and being recorded because, I mean, 20, I don't know about you, but I used mm-hmm. to think being recorded by your voice. Right. In mm-hmm. a conversation that was something like the CIA did. um and so i thought okay i could get used to this right and Mm. wouldn't it be cool that all these filmmakers all these conversations i get to have with all the filmmakers and everything the moderation that i do with the the q a's you know during the film festival and all of that if i just had a podcast around mobile filmmaking for this community and then instead of sitting down and recording a video and making a big production we could have a conversation which we're going to have anyways and record it and put it out as a podcast episode Mm -hmm. and I had this list of people that I wanted to bring on the show so I went back to this guy that we were talking about the streaming thing and all that stuff. And then we had the film festival in 2017 and mm-hmm. Aaron uh, was sponsoring that film festival with the Hall H show, which he was recording people, him and Alex were recording people on the red carpet uh, during that. And it was really cool. It was so fun. Plus the cosplayers, it was a blast. And we then after that, uh, the conversation with the other guy fizzled out. And so I I went deep into research mode. Okay, how am I going to do this podcast thing? How does this work? And so I did a lot of research. And months and months later, I recorded the very first episode, which was more like a little test, right? And Mm -hmm. I did it with Vesna Ristovska. Uh, She's in Macedonia. She's still there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, she was like a liaison for us for another festival. Um, What year was this? This was in 2017, October 6th. Wow. And now you're at your 200th episode. Look at that. And the the second one, I have to give a shout out to a couple people here. The second one, because I mean, they were like guinea pigs, right? Uh, Susie's Mm -hmm. asking me to be on this thing and... You know, we'll just trust it. We'll just we'll just mm. go for it. So the sen- the second one, the second person that I did this with was hold on. I I I want to make sure that I get this right because hold on with me, guys. Bear with me. Drum roll. Need some sound effects here. Mithran <laughs> Maharajan. Oh. He was, he's Indian, but he lived in Canada and he won our oh, Figment, first right? feature film contest. And the, the name of the film was called Figment, which by the way, Aaron loved the, I love that <laughs> the movie. opening titles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was on October 27th. That was the very first official episode. 
And then after that, it was Brian Hennings from Perth, Australia. And then that goes on. I'm not going <laughs> to name the rest. And the rest of I miss, the I miss Brian. History. He'll tell Brian if you're listening to this. <laughs> yes, he will. Uh, I'll, I'll send him a message on Facebook. We're all still connected, you know? Yeah. Um, and so this was, this was so back then, right? And the funny thing is I was going through some of the older episodes, recollecting my memories, right? You guys, Mm -hmm. I was cringing so much. (laughs) (laughs) Like I was literally, like I read the introductions and I sounded like, yes, and for now, we are going to go talk to the three bears. You know, it was like ridiculously silly, Um, (laughs) but... It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was. Yeah, I think it's always a bit, you know, strange yes. when you go back and watch or hear anything from that, like, self-discovery part. Oh, my gosh. Because it's like you haven't quite found it yet. And, you know, you're you're trying things. Some of it sticks, some of it doesn't. But, um, yeah, I, I fully relate to it. Yes. Um, sometimes I watch and look at some of my old work and it's just like, why did I even publish that? How was I even proud of like, sharing this? <laughs> but but you, that, you, need, I guess, you need to, you need to like, start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the everybody thing. Everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. And what am I going to do? Delete them? You know, it's like, there it is. It's like, maybe there it is. It's, it's there. Well, no, you think you about it. If you don't delete it. If you don't delete it. If you don't delete it, Apple deletes it for you. Well, they're not going to delete it. They just go back. But here's the thing, though, because the episodes are downloadable. They're audio files. You know, like mm-hmm. you can download each video file, each episode. Guys, you can download this special episode so if i tried to delete it later you could just laugh at me and go ha 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 but i have a copy Uh, or i know somebody who does you know so it it is part it is it's a bit of a legacy um like your films duani yeah 100 percent. i agree yeah like it's i think a lot of people you know can say or like like to like you know just bounce the idea around of oh let's start our own podcast but I think very few people actually have the discipline to do something like that consistently and the fact that you've reached 200 episodes is and my episodes can be kind of long so inspiring so it's not like and it's fine. 15 minute episodes or show. anything no I'm just saying like they're, each one of them is like a full episode like you know what I'm saying? An hour. Yeah. Yeah. There I think the they're between forty to an hour for the most part for most of them. Um yeah. but yeah, it's it's a lot and it would have been more if if this is all I did. You know what I'm saying? Because there are yeah. times when I have to take a break, you know, when we get close to the film festival and things like that, I get super busy and I'm like, I can't do one a week. <laughs> you know, uh, I've been more and more consistent as time goes by because something also happens. Now, I have to mention this because this just popped up in my head. There's only been maybe two people at two different times that have ever not you know that i've invited to come on the show and they've said no mm-hmm. you know for whatever reason nothing major mm-hmm. you know um but other than that everybody and i and i still have a list like i mm-hmm. never run out mm-hmm. of people to come on the show and that's a thing that a lot of podcasts do when they start out mm-hmm. especially because they don't have a community around it but I'm lucky enough to just not run out of people. And some people come back. Like, I don't know. There's somebody around here right now that is here again. <laughs> for, the, for the seventh time. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, Aaron, Lonnie, you know. Um, and, I, and I love doing that. I love doing this with people because, you know, it, it goes on your portfolio. It's an audio file for you, too. It's... It's a little bit of a legacy. I've had guests come on here. um, And I'm looking, every time I'm recording a podcast episode, I'm always, I I literally see the faces of some of my guests and some of the people that I know that are listening because they've told me. 
uh, people from the film festival, Duwani, as well. Mm-hmm. And I've I've had some guests come on and say, I didn't realize this or that until you asked me that one question. And then I had to answer because nobody ever asked me that question before. And they have an mm-hmm. answer and then they go back and they when they're listening to it, they go, I just learned something about myself. You know, something new. And I don't know if that's... Yeah, I really like the fact that we're coming to this conversation with the intent to have, like, ask meaningful questions and yeah, introduce, you know, meaningful topics, I guess. I mean, I might be rambling, but um, yeah, I think when people come to the room with the same intent of like, okay, we're here to discuss ideas and let that have precedence over just like, you know, hanging out and just catching up, I think. Yeah. That just results in beautiful, easygoing, flowing conversation. This is a great resource for people who are thinking about making a movie. Even if you're not thinking about doing it Mm. on the phone, there's a lot of stuff here that translates to filmmaking in general Um, and Mm. for somebody who's thinking about it or you know like I've when I go out I'm always talking about mobile filmmaking (laughs) um I've met people like you know I I met a I was in old town I know you didn't get to go there Mm. when you were here but I was in old town and there's this shop um that has like a million bottles of salsa uh no hot sauce and I was talking to this lady that was behind the counter. It turns out, oh, really? My daughter uh, is is an actor, and uh, she's always thought about maybe she should make a film. And, oh, I'm going to tell her about this, you know. And I know that there's sometimes people who are listening who have nothing to do with this, right, for the most part. They just find this really interesting that people are making movies on their phones, But then they know somebody, you know, like a nephew or a brother or a sister or, you know, somebody they work with. And they're like, hey, did you know there's like, it doesn't cost you anything here. As a matter of fact, you can listen while you're driving, riding a bike, doing your laundry, (laughs) playing video games. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's completely free. It's a great resource for people who are thinking about making movies. And hopefully some of you are inspired to make a movie because of this podcast i i know some of you are but more of you because like i said i want everybody to make a movie with their phone yeah amen uh so aaron by the way i do have to give you a little plug in here a little shout out (laughs) you had a um i got to teach mobile filmmaking at your event which just happened a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, uh, it seems like it just happened yesterday, and part of part of me can't believe it happened at all. I mean, because it's sort of been four years in the making, um, ever since pre-pandemic when we started thinking about putting this together. But um, of course, you know, that whole thing happened, and we had to put it on the back burner. But um, in 2023, we got the team back together, um, and we started looking for a venue and starting to approach, you know, all the different um, exhibitors, all the Filipino American creators that we wanted to have on the show. And so, yeah, so the first uh, Philam Creator Con uh, happened on uh, September 14th. And um, it, for, for all, for, from everything that I've been hearing, it was a, it was a success. Um, I was originally expecting only maybe 250 to 300 people because of the size of the venue. It was at, a, at the National City Library. So it wasn't, it wasn't large by any stretch of the imagination, but they had to uh, call the fire department to get everybody out. <laughs> right. So, so, but, but at, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm thinking at least 500, 550 people showed up. So yeah. the, commu- the community came, came and really supported us. And I was really. And quite... tell everybody what Phil Lamb, you know, tell, tell them, tell Duani because she, she <laughs> right. doesn't know. So, so, yeah, please so, tell so, me. so Phil Lamb, it stands for Filipino American. So Filipino American Creator Con is the name of uh, my convention. Okay. Um, and so mm-hmm. uh, we had about 18 um, Phil Lamb creators uh, showing their artwork, uh, the comic books. And then we had about eight panels. And um, it, it, we ranged from you know, having um, an all-female panel, um, you know, a music panel, uh, 
and a spotlight panel on uh, Wills Protasio and Bobby Rubio, who are are probably one of the most well-known. Um, what uh, was that Disney movie he made? Oh, he made a movie called Float when he was at Pixar. Yes, it was it was a uh, one of their their short uh, movies that he was um, given the opportunity to um, to write and direct. And so, did you ever watch that, Tony? Float. I don't think float. I... It's yeah, like this you... little baby that floats, and yeah, you know, um... he, has, he has he has these power. They hit, it's basically um, it's about a story about a Filipino uh, fam, American family as a son and father and a son. And the sun has this power. He can like fly and float. And the guy is this a short? It's a short. short film? Yeah, it's it's on Disney Plus. You can um, watch it there. Um, yeah, it sounds familiar, but I don't think I've seen it. But I've definitely heard of mm-hmm. it. But it's basically, the yeah, basically. So, so like the beginning part of the movie, he's the sun is floating around the house and, and everything, <laughs> and he's tr- and the father is trying to like, you know, protect him and you know not, you know, when he's floating. He has to go to school. He puts rocks in the backpack, so he's weighted down. <laughs> so, so basically, one one day, I don't want to ruin it, but he 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 and the, he he becomes ashamed of his son. Um, but the but but pretty much this movie is sort of like a uh, an analogy of how his son, his own son, has uh, is is aut- is autistic. So it's like a little you know yeah. parallel parallel when it comes to real to real life. So um, it was really heartwarming movie and when i watched when i went to the premiere uh in la like there wasn't a dry eye in the audience so oh i know um, i cried a little bit when i watched it <laughs> it's, it's, it's so touching yeah i gotta check this out yeah. i love movies with like kids at yeah. the center of yes. it because they're such it's so wonderful to like write kids as a character as well because you can just like be so flighty and unpredictable mm-hmm. and innocent at the same time and it's just yeah, I'm, I'm adding it to my list for sure. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So, so our two, our two first, our two guests of honors were uh, were Wills Protasio and Bobby Ruby. On Wills Protasio, he's a well-known Filipino American comic book creator, and back in the day, like in the '90s, um, he was one of the first people that uh, formed Image Comics uh, after they left Marvel Comics. So, um, he he's had a really prolific career, and um, not only was he uh, one of our our guest of honor, but uh, he was also our um, uh, recipient of our first Trailblazer Award for inspiring a lot of other Filipino American creators, um, as you know, especially Bobby Rubio, because um, we're like the next generation, sort of after him. Um, but yeah, so so basically, you know, when it comes to you know uh, the the convention, I sort of modeled it after you know San Diego Comic Con. And then after the success of my friend Keith and Jones is on event uh, Black Comics Day, where I'm also you know I also moderate panels there too, but yeah. uh, so so basically and he was there he was there too yeah yeah I love that Keith was there showing some yeah. love, but but basically you know uh, the uh, uh, the the short you know sort of like uh, uh, origin story is that do you remember that movie um, Starship Troopers? Yeah. Um, in the book, the hero is actually uh, Filipino, but mm-hmm. when I when I found that out, it sort of blew my mind, and I think that planted the seeds for for me wanting to 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 make something that would help promote, you know, Filipino American or at least Filipinos in in, in pop culture. So, uh, fast forward to you know Comic Con two thousand nineteen, um, I'm going to a panel. My my friend Scott Loss, he's a uh, He's Filipino, and I went to go support, and I watched his panel. Uh, we were outside just, you know, catching up afterwards, and then my friend Corinne uh, comes by, and she's a uh, she's an educator and a and a community organizer, and she does all these Filipino events as well. And then, you know, we took a picture together, and then I was looking at that picture, and I'm, I'm like thinking, okay, I got this awesome Filipino American comic book creator, and this awesome, you know, community organizer, and you know, I'm I'm a podcaster, but you know, I'm good at uh, organizing this and putting things together as well. And I said, I kind of thought, what if we put our, our, our resources together and come up with, you know, a convention of our own? I mean, you know, is that, is that possible? And then after going to Keithan's event, I was like, well, you know what? I, I think we can do it. That's when I started to develop a, a more yes, we can attitude. And so we started to make plans and, uh, you know, 2024 was our year uh, to finally, you know, bring it to fruition. 
It's, 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 you know, want to hear something funny about that too? I'm just going to say it. Um, Duane, there was a, a little short film that uh, someone made and they hired me to, to edit that little short mm-hmm. film. So <laughs> I'm standing there at the entrance of the, of the room where the exhibitions were, right? And <laughs> mm-hmm. this guy's there and I'm looking at him and I'm like, hey, did you ever act in this one film? <laughs> and it, it turns out he was one of the actors in the film that I had been editing. And he was like, yeah, he didn't know me from Jack. <laughs> it was like, that's so strange. So how did you escape my computer? <laughs> oh, it was so funny. Um, <laughs> but, but I thought it was like really funny because he was like, and that was years ago. That was like seven years ago or something, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it was just kind of funny. It's like, oh yeah. But you know, when you're editing Duane, there's especially mm-hmm. protagonists, right? Like, how are you going to forget them? You know, like, yeah, they just, they just <laughs> so that was you really have funny. Your own special relationship with the characters, yes. not even the actors are playing it. It's like sometimes I'll meet my actors and I'm just like, why do you have your own life? <laughs> you're supposed to be this person I wrote. You're my character, right? <laughs> oh, you're yeah. funny. Um, yeah, so I thought, uh, I think this would be a great time not to put commercials like what other podcasts oh. do <laughs> to, for our supporters. Um, no, but <laughs> I think this would be a great time to do... Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. Game. Ooh. Ooh. Are you gonna bring? Are you gonna? Are you gonna bring that that siren back? No, I am not doing that. <laughs> that was in the old days. We used to have the shout out game, and uh, mm-hmm. but that no, I'm not doing that. I'm actually this little game. I'm cheating because I have already because I thought up the game, so I have someone in mind already. But the question is. Name one actor that you'd give an Oscar Mm -hmm. for one performance in a movie. Michael Cera. Who? Michael Cera. Michael Cera for Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Ooh. So underappreciated. I love him. Oh, so. But I'm not being biased. So, so (laughs) somebody. Somebody who hasn't gotten an Oscar but deserves one? Is that what you're asking? Well, no, I, I it doesn't have to be like that. But one actor you'd give an Oscar for one performance, a particular performance in in, in one film. Hmm. Um I you know, I I think he got an Oscar, but I'm not sure. But uh Leonardo DiCaprio in um What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Oh, I'm pretty sure he did, didn't he? Yeah, Don't I think he did. Mm-hmm. Okay, bring somebody else. Oh, let me um, rephrase that. <laughs> okay. Um, ooh, who could it be? Um, you gotta pick one of the underdogs. You know, you can't go with Leo because right. he already has everything. Well, he was he, he was an under the fame's was, not gonna help. He was him. an underdog back then, so and I think. What well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then, little did he know, he was gonna oh, blow oh. up. Oh, you know what? Uh, hold on. Let me. I just. He was just on that to... comedy show, that sitcom. I need to look up a movie real quick. Hold on. He's like um... typing away. Okay, Duane, you you already won because. Oh yeah, well, I, I I stand by Michael Sarah. That's no, no, here's awesome. a... I will stand by him, rain or shine. <laughs> There's no limits to There's the things a, um... I can watch. I can, I can watch Michael Sarah just sit all day. <laughs> Of the camera on a stool. Uh-huh. There's, a, still watch there's a movie that um, that Sam Rockwell did uh, called Moon. I thought that was a really good movie, and I think moon? He did mm-hmm. yeah, Moon. He's like a, he's stuck on the moon basically. So, but it was it, he did a really good performance in that movie. Okay, you want to hear mine? Hmm. Yeah. I hope I pronounce this right. Kim Soo Hyun. You know who that is? Uh, is it the guy from no, it's a, Paris? No, it's a little girl that was in Train oh, to Busan. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I couldn't remember, so I did have to Google her, but she's the one that always comes to mind because that poor little girl, <laughs> I mean, she was such a good actor in that film. Mm-hmm. 
And I can hear every time mm. I think about that movie, I just hear her crying in my head. That film was fantastic. Thank you for reminding me it exists. I think I'm going to rewatch it. Yep. I think they're it's, making a sequel, right? God, what is it with all the sequels? I don't know. 2024, the year of the sequels. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they remaking Jaws money. too? That's what's <laughs> that. Established money. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's a concept of something <laughs> that's already been done. Easy callbacks. Yes. It's already set audiences. God. Merchandising. Where does it end? It's almost offensive, though. Like, we can't <laughs> handle new stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. hey, guys, Hollywood, listen, look. We're always looking for new things. We're okay with it. Mm-hmm. We love it. How did you think that first one did so well in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Oh, my gosh. Well, I know that I really enjoyed doing this. What am I missing? Duani, what are you, what are you doing next? What's up in your neck of the woods? Um, I am completing post-production on my horror short film scene. Mm. And I'm really excited about that one because it is also a proof of concept for a feature. And it has some really exciting people on board, namely my lead, Kosser Mohammed, who has starred in Jurassic World and the flash and appendage and a bunch of other awesome shows yeah nice. she's awesome um and i just i just found my, i found myself a really amazing crew that just make the project shine so much more and so i'm in post with that and i'm excited to be doing a festival round with that next year nice. that's where i'm at very 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 cool and it hasn't Thank been seen you. yet it hasn't been seen yet, and the title is seen. Exactly. <laughs> I'm yeah. so corny. I'm so and sorry. I hope, and, I, and I hope that when people leave the theater after watching it, they feel seen. Like they've <laughs> seen something exceptionally yeah. awesome. There you go. See, Duani, this is We're why I love corny. you. You you get We're all my corny jokes. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Aaron? Uh, well, now that the uh, the Philam Creator Con is uh, is uh, done for now, um, planning gonna, the next one. I'm already pl- yes, you know I was already planning the next one before the last one was even. Now you finished. know what I go through every year with the film festival. It's yeah. like the last day, and I'm already plotting the next one, right? Yeah, I mean the the well, I have a team meeting in about a month, and they want to have a potluck and have one big idea creating session so i'm looking forward to nice. that um but also now that um i have a little bit more time i can uh jump back on the hall eight show and start uh you know getting some guests on there there's some guests who've been wanting to come on so i'm Me. gonna be yes <laughs> yes it's time for you to come back on for sure for the 17th um, time <laughs> for the 17th time. <laughs> um yeah you're, you're always welcome um <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's that. And also my, my day to day as a graphic designer that keeps me busy as well. Yeah. All right. So, so I guess that does it for us. Uh, international mobile film festival.com. Go check out what you can submit to the film festival for next year. And also SBP studio where this episode will be published. And if you're listening to me, obviously it's been published. <laughs> Makes a little bit of sense, right, guys? <laughs> yep. I, w- I wish I could. Just or, or you're a time traveler. Yeah, yeah, right. I wish I could give you 200 fish tacos for 200 episodes. Oh, my God. I don't know that. <laughs> I think they'd just be sitting here can, smelling. Can I pitch in? <laughs> I should pitch in. I'll, I'll, I'll get 100 of those. Right. Oh, my gosh. It'll be from the both of us. 100 each. Yeah. It'll be a hundred uh-huh. fish tacos. <laughs> You'll be drowning in fish. Be t- You'll be drowning in a sea of fish tacos. I th- Get it? I think my puppy. <laughs> Get it, Susie? Yes. I'll it's be a sea of fish sea. tacos. Oh, speaking of sea, the scene. Um, oh. <laughs> so, so we're getting Hold silly. Um, you know, uh, where you're in? Are you in New Jersey or where are you right now again? Yeah, I'm in Jersey City. I'm just you're across in the river from my favorite city, New York. Yes. So she's you're across the pond, basically. 
I'm across the pond and I like it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. I like I like quiet and peace at night when I sleep. Yes. And I like to wake up and take my boat out and swim across the river to New York. I would love to spend some time in the heart of New York City. We're like, you wake up in the middle of the night going, damn, I don't know why I woke up at 3 a.m., but or 2 a.m. Because your neighbor is partying. No, no, just <laughs> randomly. I, I do that here, you know, and I just wake up and yeah. I'm like, hey, look out the window. Hey, it just go down, <laughs> down into the life happening because it's the city yeah. that never sleeps, right? That is true. So you just got to buy some eye masks. Yeah. <laughs> All the blinding lights. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, it's been a blast recording for you guys. I do have something for you guys to do for a second here. Uh, instead of just saying goodbye, mm -hmm. listeners, um, I would love for you guys to address everyone who's listening right now and just give them a little word of something something inspiring not to put you on the spot or anything but i literally am <laughs> oh okay start with you aaron i'm gonna aaron i'm gonna let you go first because you know it's 2024 and men first okay thank you <laughs> <laughs> um well i'm always a big proponent of saying that stories matter and uh, now that you have something in your pocket you know that has you know, all the capabilities to, to tell your story, you know, in a movie, um, you know, I encourage, I encourage you to do just that because if you don't tell your story, somebody else will. Sounds good. Wow. It's very profound. Am I going to have to follow up that? I don't know. He That's just took so the hard. Oscar. Maybe now it's <laughs> time did, for you. Really. <laughs> now now it's time for, for the, the Emmy. Supporting act. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, jokes aside, I'm just so happy to be here and to everyone who's listening, I guess my two cents are that, I mean, just adding on top of everything that Aaron said, because it's so true, is that um, sometimes we tend to take ourselves too seriously. You know, you want to make a film, but then you get overwhelmed by the process or you don't know what to make it about. You're worried about judgment, what people will think. And you kind of intellectualize it so much that you never end up doing it. And so to that, I just want to say that films and stories, essentially, they, they make you feel stuff before they make you think stuff. So it's that feeling that you want to capture on screen. Um, and you should just like let yourself be... Uh, you know, carefree and with a sense of just abandon, just like explore a feeling before you start intellectualizing it, I guess. Yep. Don't take yourself too seriously. We're all stupid <laughs> houseplants <laughs> who just need to be watered and fed. Have a coffee and, and have get a some sunlight. There you, go. there you go. Yep. Hey, Susie, congratulations on 200 episodes. I'm so, I'm so, yeah. I'm so proud of your accomplishment. And I'm, I'm just happy that, uh, you know, you, you let us, be in your orbit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I want to say, I want to address to you, to the listeners of the show. I want to say thank you again from the bottom of my heart for being a part of it. You know, being a part of this show. Um, you're a part of every single episode because I see you. I think of you. I care about you. Uh, stay in touch. You know, you can find me on social media, send me a message, uh, hit some stars if you're on the Apple podcasts or write a little review, whatever you want to do. Just let me know. Just give me another face, another another name, another soul out there uh, <laughs> to think about. And just thank you again. And to everyone who's ever been on this show, including you two right here, right now. Um, I can't thank you enough, you know, uh, for for being a part of the show and inspiring people who are listening to this. Uh, podcasting is not the easiest thing to do. It is work, but I do it because I care about you. And I think these are stories that are coming from you guys, from your hearts, you know, as you're on the show. And um, and I think they're definitely way worth sharing so with that 
Goodbye, listeners. Goodbye. Good night. Go make, go make that movie. <laughs>